Welcome to Boxed In. This is Yahoo Sports's argument show, debate show, fun show, COVID-19, we need hashtag content show. Welcome. I am Liz Loza. I uh, am one of the co-hosts of the Yahoo Fantasy Football podcast and fantasy football expert. But today I am going to be the judge, jury, and executioner for our two uh, counsel here, I suppose. We have first up, senior Yahoo Sports writer of all the things, Jay Busby, holding things down in Atlanta. So the topic is best comeback. Tiger Woods, who is who Jay will be arguing in favor of, and Vincent Goodwill, our senior NBA writer, who will be arguing in favor of Michael Jordan, though my friend here, Vince is, is from Detroit, so I don't know how uh, solid his argument is going to be. And I have to say, I grew up in the 90s in Chicago, so good luck, Jay. I, I, I've got the deck stacked against me here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to already put in my preliminary appeal on the judgments that's going to be ruled against me at this point. Well, I wouldn't have worried too much because you got a Lambeer truther here stumping for Jordan, so I'm not sure how persuasive he's going to be. But let's get down to it. Jay, I'm going to let you kick things off just to demonstrate my impartiality. Tell me why Tiger Woods had the best comeback. Okay. Now, going against Michael Jordan in an argument is like going against Michael Jordan on the court. I mean, I I, I understand the severity and the depth and the, the mountain that I'm trying to climb here. But let me put a couple of uh, numbers on the board for you. Tiger has more championships than Jordan did. He's been winning at the highest level, still winning for 22 years. And he did it without a Scottie Pippen or a Phil Jackson. However, we're talking about comebacks right now. And Tiger Woods has had not one, but two comebacks from astounding lows. Uh, one of them was very much self-inflicted, scandalous, and then one of the other one was because of injury, where he was so flat on his back that he literally could not even hold a golf club, and yet he comes back and wins the Masters. I've got all the respect in the world for Jordan, but in terms of comebacks, it's Tiger all the way. So Jay keeping it specific to comeback, not overall sports legend who shall be crowned accordingly. Vince, give me your reason as to why MJ's comeback is the best in sports history. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, and, and this is the way I like to uh, phrase things, I will display my impartiality in three parts here because Michael Jeffrey Jordan had a better comeback than anybody because you can argue that Michael Jordan post-comeback was better than Michael Jordan pre-retirement. And while Tiger Woods has more majors than Michael Jordan has championships, Jay has a little bit of a flaw in his argument considering Tiger has four opportunities per year to win a quote-unquote championship, whereas Michael Jordan has one. Nobody else got a chance to win when Michael Jordan was winning championships pre-comeback, post-comeback. Well, pre-comeback, there was a team in Detroit that kind of got some skins on the wall, but we're going to leave that alone. Post-comeback, Nobody else was winning when Michael Jordan was playing. We're not going to count the Wizards. We're only counting 1995 through 1998. He was arguably a better player. He was arguably playing in a better, more stronger league. And while he had Scottie Pippen and had to drag that dead carcass <laughs> along, he actually <laughs> raised Scottie Pippen. So when you're talking about the greatest basketball player of all time, retiring after nine years, coming back for another three and enhancing his legacy, I think Michael Jordan is the clear-cut answer. While I respect Tiger Woods being able to come back from the self-inflicted um, golf club in an Escalade, escapade. <laughs> Very intriguing, Vince. I, I like this, though. There were some who might argue that MJ's necessary comeback was also self-inflicted, but we're going to get to that a little bit later. And although you keep bringing up Scottie Pippen, both y'all, no love for BJ Armstrong. I don't understand it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so let's talk about both of these players at their ceilings, at their highs. I want to hear what you think their defining moments were when they were riding at their highest. Jay, you begin, please. I'm going to give you two because Tiger Woods had two of the greatest moments in sports history, and they were separated by 11 years. First of all, you have the 2008 U.S. Open. This is a tournament where Tiger won his 14th major, and he won it on a broken leg. With all due respect to the flu game, winning on a broken leg is tougher than winning with the flu. So Tiger Woods manages to win in extra holes, takes a full extra day to win a tournament where he was hobbling around on a leg that would sideline him for the rest of the year. Now, we thought at that point that Woods was going to be, be just completely dominant for the next half decade. He had some other problems, which we'll talk about later. But it wasn't until 2019, just last year, 
that he comes back and wins the Masters in a way that nobody could have expected he would win. The only way that I would compare it is if Jordan had won in the Wizards uniform, if he had won a championship. It was astounding. It was the kind of thing that that is is unbelievable unless until you actually see it in sports. It was these it were these two peaks here, 2008 U.S. Open and 2019 Masters that are two of the greatest wins in sports history and they both belong to the same guy do you think jay that the reason that tiger doesn't get as much recognition as mj is perhaps and i'm helping you here because <laughs> golf is just an inherently boring sport <laughs> that's helping me tiger made it cool tiger tiger is the you take tiger out of the equation Fair. that proves yes. my argument you take tiger out of the equation and golf is the most unbelievably <laughs> boring sport in existence and i love golf but you take tiger out and it's, it, it ratchets down several levels. Every time a tournament is on, what's the first question that you ask? How's Tiger doing? If Tiger's in the mix, you want to watch. If Tiger's not even playing, boom, you're on to something else. That's as, as good an example as I can give for Tiger's supremacy. That that is that is a good argument, though I think you're underselling the Chigi Rodriguez duel, <laughs> fencing duel with the golf club. Vince doesn't even know who Chigi Rodriguez is. Look at this. <laughs> All right, Vince. let's kick it up to you, Vince. Remind me, take me back to my childhood, and remind me about Michael Jordan at his high. And again, the the defining, maybe one or two of his most defining moments that typified his ceiling. Well, first off, you're not going to win me on a cool factor between Tiger Woods and Michael freaking Jordan. Like, <laughs> no, be, that's not that's not going to happen. That's not going to happen there, Jay. Vince, if I may, I would actually defer that to you completely uh, because Tiger Woods, <laughs> Tiger Woods is such on a different plane from Michael Jordan. I'm going to tell a quick story here that when Tiger Woods was a young golfer, was just starting to get famous, and he was trying to find out how to get the attention of women. And he asked Michael Jordan, how do I do that? How do I get women to pay attention to, it, to me? And Jordan just looked at him and said, tell him you're Tiger Woods. And that was it. That was it. So, yes, I defer the cool points over to Jordan. I happily give that over to you. Definitely took that advice, too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, and it took and took it to Waffle House yes. all across the country. <laughs> took it to Perkins. <laughs> yes. Took it everywhere. <laughs> Yes, I, I'm sorry. I, I had to. It, you just laid it up for me. I had to. I had to take it. No, but if we're talking about peak Michael Jordan, I, I present to you 1993, Magic Johnson, Larry Bird. Neither of them could go back to back beyond back to back championships. Even Isaiah Thomas went back to back championships, but couldn't win three in a row. Michael Jordan carried his team beyond an 0-2 deficit in the conference finals, and then in the NBA finals without home court advantage posted a 40-point scoring average in the 93 finals against the Phoenix Suns for a three-peat. Now, granted, he duplicated that feat again post-retirement in 1998 with the uh, Bulls as far as a three-peat. But that's pre-retirement Jordan. How about post-retirement Jordan? I present to you 1997, the second title of the three-peat. In game one, he hit the game winner. In game two, he had a triple-double. In game five, there was the flu game. In game six, he had the winning assist to Steve Kerr. Not has there ever been one player who put his individual tattoo on every single win his team had in the NBA Finals the way that Michael Jordan did in 1997. And you can't even call that his best series, but that was his most defining series. That's why with all these different questions, there's completely different answers because there's so many different examples of Jordan's individual excellence despite the presence of Scottie Pippen. I hear that. Very good. Also, fun fact, y'all know that even though MJ and the Bulls won in their three-peat against the Knicks, Pat Riley had, uh, I believe, TM'd. He had trademarked the phrase three-peat, so we ended up making all that damn money anyway. Even when Pat Riley loses, he wins. Yes. No? All right. Um, now let's talk about those lows. We've we've hinted at them a little bit. Um, and you know what? I'm going to switch things up here. Vince, I want you to start with the lows because I want to see which ones and how, which ones you're going to pick and how you're going to present them since we sort of know, or I'm going to assume we know where Jay is going to go. Well, if we're talking about pre-retirement, Michael Jordan, the lows would clearly be, and let's just take losing his father and everything else out, out of it. You know, the, the tragic uh, 1993 murder of his father that kind of precipitated uh, the retirement. If we're talking about from an athletic standpoint, clearly we know exactly where Michael Jordan's best losses were to a team in Detroit with a six foot one guard who just happened to beat him year after year after year, not just on the floor, but physically too. Those Detroit Piston bad boys teams were the toughest roughest and gave Jordan the most, the rudest treatment possible. So I would say, 
pre-retirement, that was probably the worst Jordan had ever been treated. There's never been a team to beat Michael Jordan three times in the playoffs, let alone three straight years in the playoffs, let alone be a team that denied him the opportunity to go to the NBA Finals, let alone be a team in his own division, let alone be a, a player who's from Chicago that probably made it just as more delicious for Isaiah Thomas to beat Michael Jordan. But if we're talking about post-retirement, losing in 1995 to the Orlando Magic upon his comeback, that ranks up there too. But I would say for my money, losing to that pesky team at Detroit, Liz, I'm sorry to hurt your feelings. It was so delicious. I hear you. I, I, I do think that there are... I do want to talk, though, as much as I'm giving you this moment and you can roll around in it. Listen, COVID-19's got us all a little bit a little bit down, right? So, like, take your joy where you can find it. But the comeback for which Michael is famous is not necessarily that one. Any any chance of arguing in favor of another one? Because if you're talking about his bounce back, he didn't really have to bounce that high. Well, the Orlando loss was was huge because... Everybody just assumed that Michael Jordan coming back, wearing the 45 and everything else, the Bulls were just going to elevate themselves back to championship competition. And then losing in the second round of the playoffs, not getting to the NBA Finals, not getting to the Conference Finals, and losing to a young team, not losing to the New York Knicks, not losing to a veteran Indiana Pacers team, using to the, losing to the young Turks, Penny Hardaway and Shaquille O'Neal, a team that was supposed to be running the Eastern Conference for years to come. That put a lot of doubt in people's minds whether Michael Jordan and the Bulls could actually get back before the 72 win season and everything else. So it was a pretty big bounce back when you consider the narrative at the time that with Shaq and Penny being so young and them scheduled to sort of be the new Kareem and Magic, there was no guarantee that the Bulls were going to get back that next season. Now, granted, they did and everything in the history has shown that we were all foolish for thinking otherwise. But let's be real honest here. That Orlando team was stacked and they were young and they were coming yeah, Michael wasn't washed, but he looked it for a minute. All right. Give it to me, Jay. Tell me tell me where we're going to go here. Well, you know, Tiger uh, missed a couple putts on uh, one tournament in uh, 2004 that I really think were his lowest point. No, no, I want you to cast your mind back to Thanksgiving 2009. Uh, young Barack Obama is in office. Uh, the only Marvel movie out, I think, is Iron Man. And Tiger Woods is a happy family man. Or so we thought. It was in that Thanksgiving weekend of 2009 that Tiger Woods' entire mystique, entire image, entire public persona was blasted to bits with the revelation that he was having affairs with not one, not two, not three, and probably not even 12 different women. <laughs> he was touring all over the world, all over the country, Perkins, uh, Perkins restaurants, parking lots, whatever you want to name, he was there. He absolutely had a complete secret life that upended everything about that we knew about the guy. We, If you remember, we thought of Tiger Woods as, as the perfect family man, the iconic model for an athlete in America. And that, in one incident in which his wife found out about what he'd been doing, was blown all to pieces. And it took him years to recover from that, years. And, and many would argue that his image has never recovered from that. I don't think he's ever going to persuade anybody that he's a great husband ever again. But beyond that, he also had a litany of injuries that came from all kinds of different uh, sources, all kinds of different regions. He had uh, surgery on his back, on his neck, on his knees, everything to the point that in 2017, just a couple of years ago, he confided to Gary Player that he was done playing golf. He was finished. He wanted to just be able to walk and play with his kids and be able to do that without pain. And then two years later, He's putting on another green jacket. He's hugging his children at the 18th green at Augusta. It's an astounding comeback. We're not here to defend Tiger Woods as a man. We're here to present his comeback. And that is the most remarkable comeback in, in all of sports to me. All due respect to Michael Jordan and the Pistons. You have both given me a lot to think about and ruminate over. Now, before I throw down my decision, I would like to add that our Twitter handle at Yahoo Sports went ahead and pulled our followers who had the better career comeback 47.2% of people who replied said Tiger Woods and Michael Jordan won by a narrow margin of 52.8%. So the people believe that MJ is the winner. I will disagree. 
I actually think the biggest comeback is from Tiger Woods. And Vince, I am surprised that you didn't go the gambling angle with MJ. Uh, and because that to me is a diff, a real big part of his comeback. You didn't present that as your evidence. You kept things very technical into the book. I like but that was the before Jay the Rem- retirement. That was before the retirement. The gambling but was coming be- back with the 45 is part of a comeback. You know, you as as Jay said of Tiger, uh, he had more than one comeback. MJ had a couple, too. And I frankly think the fact that Tiger is still out there doing it, although let's be honest, go- golf is obviously not as, uh, as as intense of a contact sport as basketball is. I still think that while MJ is the biggest GOAT of all sports, Tiger's comeback in particular, he mounted much more. I'm going to give it to Jay and Tiger in this one. Thank you, Judge Lizzo. We respect your decision. I, I do not respect your decision. I think that this is a Detroit bias. I am going to appeal for a more impartial judge. You sound just like Bob Costas <laughs> in the 90s. All right. Anyway, that is Boxed In. Please continue to follow us on Twitter at Yahoo Sports. I'm at Liz Loza underscore FF. Vince, Jay, give the people your social media handle so they can check out all of the different things that you're doing. At Vince Goodwill. And I am at Jay Busby. Thanks so much, everyone. Stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll be back with another episode of Boxed In sometime. 